that hole that you see there doesn't amount to anything. When I get that driven in the rest of the way, there will be a slight hole there, but that's just the thickness of this going across through there. So that's not a big deal. And uh, everything else is absolutely snug tight. I know this sounds silly, but I wouldn't even be afraid to string this base up without gluing it in here. I know it's that tight. It will hold that much pressure. Um, it's not going to pull out. But, of course, it wouldn't last that way. It would wear. So we will glue it, of course. So I'm just in and back out. Do that three or four more times or a couple more times and it'll probably show me where the high spots are again. I don't see too much this time. See a little bit down here on this heel. Try it one more time just to see. Yeah, well, it's so close. Technically, that's a fit right there. I, uh, I think I'm going to still do it a few more times. I'm still not completely satisfied with that, believe it or not, because there's. Um, I just want to make sure it, it's seated all the way to flush. It's just a hair not flush. The other thing that I found here, if you can look right in the end there, there is a nail driven in the end of this, and that's what split this off originally. So I'm going to try to break this back off take that nail out, put this back in there tight and smooth too because it's not in there right. It, you can feel a lump there. <sighs> not really seeing any places where it's rubbing right now. Maybe a hair right up here at the big end. Maybe that was it. Yeah, that might have been it. And maybe not. Felt like it went further that time. Ah. Well, that may be it. That may have to be what I call good enough. That is absolutely solid. It's straight. And uh, I think we're going to take this chip off of here now, get that nail out of there. There's a nail driven into it this way too, by the way, I see. There's, there's two nails in that. We'll get that out, glue that back right. Then we'll glue up the joint and put her together. Well, I thought I'd bring it back here. I, uh, this was actually loosened up from all the banging, I suppose. And so I was able to get that off, the chip off, and the little nail that they had driven into it. And so this nail went through the hole right here to hold the chip on. And uh, so we, we will get rid of that. We won't need that no more. But I thought I'd show you this. See, this is now not a nail. It is a screw actually a screw right there that's broke off so that's going to be a fun fix to get that out of there without doing more damage but we'll get it i think we got her done as far as the joint goes anyway i took that little chip off and re-glued it with super glue because there was so much other kind of glue on there and super glue is about the only thing that will stick to other glue and uh because glue won't even stick to itself now super glue is a tip actually sometimes when you can't get a part to stick together you put a little super glue on both parts let it dry then you stick them back together with some more super glue and it'll hold that way uh, super glue will stick to itself but very few other glues will 
Anyway, so we got that glued back in there, got all the nails and screws out of there. I uh, did a little more fitting on the joint just because I still felt like it might have been a hair too tight. And uh, got it in there where it's pretty flush, uh, pretty happy with it. So it's time to glue this baby up. So here we go. One thing about it, I won't need much of a clamp because it's tight. this <sighs> there's glue squeeze out right here in the front already <sighs> and I'm just gonna tap her home with this I want to make sure she's all the way in there and she is now I'll get a wet rag a warm wet rag and wipe all that glue off we've got the uh, base neck project completed you can see here that I've cut a large pad of wood and I, I, I've made a very fine exacto knife cut across the uh, veneer here. Uh, cut halfway through this uh, plywood. So I took off about two layers of plywood and there's about three layers left. Then I put cut this to fit that exactly. It steps down here and matches up with the back of the neck and everything. Anyway, I cut it all big so it's all large got it glued on here and uh, I am going to carve all this exactly flush with the back and with all the contours of the base here so it will it won't look like it's factory but it'll look like a professional job when it's done so that and then we'll, of course we'll stain it to match one of the next things I have to do is this veneer has come loose from the inside block so I'll have to glue all this down then I've noticed this hole here, the veneer, I just noticed the veneer is coming loose at the tail block here too. You can push in and out and the veneer is definitely loose. And so I'm going to have to try to figure out how to fix that and get that veneer glued back to that inside block. This is what he's been using for a tail pin. It's just a little wooden dowel and it goes through this ferrule and this is yeah, it works, but it's crap, so I'm going to go into my metal shop, turn down a uh, piece of metal that will fit this ferrule exactly. The only other problem is that the hole that this goes in, as I showed you a minute ago, the hole is all wallered out. This thing just falls in and out, uh, literally. So, I'll probably have to fix the hole first. I'll probably fill the hole back in and then re-drill it to match this exactly glue this in and have the metal peg then and it'll be much much better much uh, more sturdy and it'll keep that end from breaking any further because all that play there is causing that end to bust this whole veneer thing is loose on the this is where the tail pin goes through this is actually the hole right here I stuck a few wet a couple of wedges down in here to pull the veneer out without as far as I can without breaking it and by pushing the other veneer in, I can see down in here a little bit. So now I think I can get some glue down in here. I don't know if I should try another wedge or two to just kind of help hold it out a little bit. Maybe just lightly in there on both sides. So I can get some glue down in there as far back in there as I can. It's not going to be an easy one. Actually, maybe take those back out now. It gives me more access to all the glue joints okay well so I'm going to get glue down in there with a brush and all kinds of things and we'll see how that works not easy just gonna squeeze it into the crack and kind of almost use this as pressure to force it down in there 
And it looks like it's going down in there quite a bit, so hopefully this is going to work. It's better than better than not doing it, that's for sure. Yeah, it's way down in there, so it'll probably all squeeze out here pretty good. You can see it squeezing back up through the hole here. Okay, well that got glue on one side of it pretty good. Now I'm going to turn it over and see if I can get glue down in the other side. I'll start here with a wedge to try to wedge the other side out. Yeah, it's looking like it might work. Need to find a way to wedge, wedge it like I did the other one though so I can get some real opening going on here. There we go. All right, now we can get some glue down in there too. Okay, and that's squeezing glue out too. Pushing these in and out like that pumps the glue and sucks it back down in there, so doing all that helps. Okay, we get all the extra glue off, and I'm going to get it out of the hole too because I want to keep the hole as round as I can keep it until I re-drill it. I'm going to drill the hole out bigger, plug it, and then drill it back to the right size for that metal ferrule that has to go through there. Okay, so now we got to find a way to clamp that. Now how is that going to hold that in there? With wedges. There, yeah, that's got both of them glued or clamped. Pretty solid now. We'll just call that good enough. It's as clamped as good as I can clamp it with what I have to work with. Well, friends, I think we're about done with the base. Just uh, all we got to do now is string it up. I believe everything else is in good working order. Let's just recap what we've done and show you what, how it ended up. First of all, you can see here in the picture, I have a new end pin. I made that out of aluminum stock and turned it down in several places so that this uh, tightening screw could fit in those little grooves. I had an old uh, crutch end, I guess is what that is, is probably off of a crutch or something. I had that laying around in the shop. I turned down a piece of wood that fit inside of there, drilled a hole in that to fit inside of here. So basically I just made everything here that you're seeing in my hand and uh, it's really solid. I don't think that will be any problem. So while we're at the end here, try to tilt the camera down a little bit more. This seam right here was completely unglued off of the wooden blocks and you recall that I glued that back and clamped that with a band clamp. The seam right here was uh, completely unglued and I re-glued all that. So we got that fixed. The fingerboard had uh, several breaks in it down through here and across here. We re-glued all that and that seems to be pretty solid. Of course you know that we uh, cut a whole new neck block down inside of the we left the main part of the neck block but we inserted another piece of neck block down in the, the original neck block a hardwood uh, sycamore carved the dovetail in the sycamore then to match the dovetail on the neck well this is going to wrap it up here we've got our strung up I thought I'd also point out I did fix one more thing there was a real bent tuning key right here it was bent so bad that it was very hard to turn it there's well beaten path on this old